have a look at this line chart. It is a mess because it's super hard to figure out what the meaning of this chart is and what it is supposed to say. Also, the fonts are hard to read, the lines are very colorful and they go all over the place which is why such a plot is sometimes called spaghetti plot. Now, instead of creating such a chart, let us learn how to create a chart like this. This chart has a clear message and the chart elements support that message quite nicely. The fonts are large, the theme is minimalistic and there is a lot less color. Overall, the plot uses colors really strategically to focus on the message. This is what we're going to learn to create today, so let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is to load the tidyverse and then load the data. Here, this is just a CSV file from our world and data that I have already cleaned. You will find a link to that data as well as the cleaning script and the plot code in the description below. So in this data set we can see the columns age, person and minutes. These are the columns that we are going to pass to ggplot. Thus, let us take the data and then pass it to ggplot where we map age to the x-axis, minutes to the y-axis and person to the color. Of course, we want to have a line chart, so we're going to use gmline for this. And since we want to have a title, we are also going to call the labs function to create that title. All right, this was the first chart you have seen in this video. Time to make it better. First, we're going to replace the labels by fee minimal. In there, we are going to ensure that the base font size is large enough and we're going to use a nicer font. The second step is optional, but you really have to make sure that your font is large enough so that everyone can read your chart. This is like the most basic thing you can do, but it makes your chart so much better. And now we can focus on the labels of this chart. We are going to put in the labs function again and set the x axis to h and remove the y axis label because I prefer to have the information about the y axis as a subtitle. Otherwise, people will have to tilt their head to read the label. Then we are going to add a title that really points out the message immediately and we're going to add a subtitle that describes the y-axis now. Finally, we are going to add a caption to show where our data is coming from. Now it is time to use colors more strategically. This means that we're going to use the GG highlight package to, well, highlight specific parts of our chart and gray out everything else. This package is really easy to use. Once the package is loaded, all we have to do is add a GG highlight layer and fill it with conditions for which parts are supposed to be highlighted. In this case, that corresponds to the person being alone or children and the age being larger than 38. You could use 40 here, but I found that 38 has a nicer look to it. Of course, in the title, I still use the around the age of 40 formulation because 40 looks like a nicer number. Once you execute this, you will see that the legend is gone and you have direct labels instead. Also, you get a weird warning message. Now, because I want to set the direct labels myself, I will first remove them by setting use direct label to false and I will also set use group by to false. This will get rid of the warning message and the direct labels. Finally, we can make our gray lines a little bit lighter by specifying the color and line width through a list. Nice, this is already starting to look better. Now let us put the labels back in. We are going to do this manually to ensure that the labels are right there where we want them to be. So we are going to add an annotation, it will be a text annotation and we are going to specify the coordinates of the labels and then all of the aesthetics like the size of the labels, the actual text of the labels, the font family, I want the text to be bold, I want to have it right aligned and I want to use the colors from the Okabe Ito color palette. Since I have used different colors than the standard GG plot colors here, I need to set the color scale to those colors as well by using scale color manual and setting values to the same colors. So all we have done here is to set labels and use different colors. Clearly the legend doesn't really help much anymore, it just takes up space, so let's remove it by setting legend position to none. Now, if you recall our final chart, you may remember that we had a dashed line that went from the x-axis to the point where the colors started. Let's add this in via a segment annotation. So we're going to add annotate again and we're going to use a segment annotation. Then we're going to specify the coordinates of the start and end point of the segment. We're going to specify the line type. In this case, two corresponds to a dashed line and we're going to make it a little bit wider than the typical line. Finally, we are going to use the gray pen color. Cool, 
This looks already pretty neat, so let us add the finishing touches to it. We start by getting rid of the minor grid lines because we don't really need that many lines. It's just a lot of clutter. Then we are going to make our grid lines into dashed narrow lines so that they don't take up as much space as the solid lines from before. Finally, we are going to set a lot of text properties like first moving the title all the way to the left. I prefer this style so that the title aligns with the rest of this chart. And then we are going to change the text color and the axis text color. You may think that changes are sometimes barely noticeable, but I'm doing this to really ensure that the text do not take up too much visual room from the important parts of the charts. Additionally, we are going to use a different font for the plot title because I like it if the title has a very distinct font. It's like an eye-catching element. Also, I'm going to format the subtitle just to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to add a little bit of space below it so that it is not as cramped in there. Finally, we can make the plot caption smaller as well and make the color a little bit lighter than the black it uses by default. This is already a nice plot, but you can go one step further by colorizing single words in the title to match up with the colors in the plot. Here's how that works. First, you need to save your colors into a vector. In this case, I'm just using the same colors from before and saving it into a vector. Then I'm going to create a new title text using the glue function. In there, I will just use the text from before and I will add a little bit of HTML notation which uses these span tags. These tags set the color style and since we don't know the hex code for the colors ourselves, we will just let glue put the right hex codes from the colors vector into this text. Then we have to close our span tags. Also, notice that I have used this markdown notation to make the font bold. Next, I will add the line break with the HTML line break notation because we're using HTML notation here, so we cannot use backslash n like before. And then we are going to do the same thing with the other word. Now, if we execute this and have a look at the text, we will see that it looks like HTML now and we have the hex code inside of the text. All that is left to do is to take this variable, put it into our labs function for the title, but if we execute this, we will see that it doesn't yet do what we want. This is why we need to set the plot title to element markdown. This is not a standard function as it comes from the GG text package. Finally, if we execute this code now, it looks exactly like we want it to. Alright, that's how you go from meaningless spaghetti plot to meaningful, highly customized line chart. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you did. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.